praise you in this day. I will lift my hands. Hey, listen, everybody. Greetings to you. Praising God in the storms of life. Praising God in the storms of life. When things are happening that is a suffering, remember that he that suffers with him shall reign with him. What, what, what did the suffering that God talked about rewarding, what was that about? That's the suffering when you're in the will of God. When you're listening to the Holy Spirit and things still become troublematic, problematic. That suffering has crowns to it and rewards. And there's always a solution. The beauty of a problem is that it is a portal to hear from God. Wow. The beauty of a problem is that it is a portal to hear from God. So when you have a problem, God is speaking. And the grace prophetically that you now carry is heightened. The suffering that you experience when you're in the will of God, there's a recompense. There's a reward. There's a compensation for pain and suffering. It's times like these that I remember the former days in where I would go through suffering, whether it was from the weather, whether it was from people, mistreatment that I was staying with, whether it was homelessness, whether it was not having food and having to wait. All those moments of suffering, I look at where I am today and I realize he that suffers with me shall also reign with me is not for heaven. Is for earth. There comes a time where all the sufferings that you experience on earth, God rewards you on earth and crowns you on earth. Because see, I, I started mine very early. So like, the thing about it, if you look at it, it's like a decade later. You see what I'm saying? Because it, and some of it is like over a decade later that I experienced the harvest of everything I was doing. Are you seeing this? So, even if you look at my life, right? It was over a decade that the full totality of the hundredfold came to pass. It doesn't take long for the Holy Spirit to give you a crown and, and, and reigning power and authority for suffering. So when you go through stuff, when you're in the will of God, you're doing what God says. Don't faint. Nor get into accusation. Nor get into self-condemnation. Because even when you're obeying God, things will go wrong. And this is the wisdom that everybody must understand so you never get offended. Even when you're doing what God says, you will encounter evil times. Remember, David never did anything to Saul, never disrespected him, but 
Saul pit David in a storm. Remember, David is in a storm, not because he disobeyed God, not because he did something wrong, but because he has an enemy. Now, could David go to the Lord and say, Lord, why is this happening to me? No, it wouldn't be smart. Could David go to the Lord and say, Lord, I did something wrong. Please forgive me. No, it wouldn't be smart. Because all David did was just listen to God. Remember, he ministered to Saul. He blessed Saul. But now there's a storm. David is running around. David can't eat what he want to eat. He can't do what he wants to do. Because he has to go into hiding. And remember, Saul was a king. So when you're a king, you can access people in different areas and say, Did you see Saul? Did you see David? Where did he go? Who did he talk to? What place is he staying at? So David is in a real storm. Because he can't run. He can't hide. Because Saul, with one request, can threaten somebody. And they'll confess where David is. So when you see Jonathan protecting David, you see a depth of the storm that David was in. If Jonathan doesn't protect him, David gets taken out. Now, is that God's fault? No, it's just somebody not being loyal. It's just somebody not listening. In this life, even these weather conditions, it's proof that you are the perfection within imperfection. There's things that's going to happen in this earth, in your life, that's not perfect, even though you're perfect. Even though you're doing what God says, the imperfection will still, it may confront you at any given time. So you have to gird up the loins of your mind and be ready for solutions and answers. Be ready for how do you want me to handle this Holy Spirit? And don't be afraid and don't condemn yourself too quickly as if you're causing the trouble. And at the same token, don't get Accusator, don't accuse God as if God is not loving towards you. Because I want to tell you that I have suffered to get here. I've suffered even after I got here. And some of the suffering, you know, all of it is good. All of it is a blessing and it's an anointing added on to you because you're living in an imperfect world. You're around imperfect people. You're 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 going to experience imperfect seasons, but you stay perfect and the harvest going to come to you of perfection. Remember what Psalm says. I think that's Psalm 138 or something. I will perfect that which concerns you. Glory to God. Glory to God. I will perfect that which concerns you. Everything that matters to you, that is pertaining to you, I will perfect it. Meaning, I know that it's been imperfect. But I'm going to add my spirit and make it the way that it's supposed to be. Look at your life right now because it's not going to look the same. In three weeks, in three months, it's not going to look the same by May, by June, by July. This constant transformation that God is given to you, the father, the more you're listening to his word and listening to what he's saying, he even honors you for taking the time to be a student of it. Everything has a time frame to it. It doesn't last forever. But you praise God. And you say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Whenever I have gone through, even in my teenage years, when I would go through storms, storms, like I told you, things wasn't perfect. 
I understood what mistreatment was. I've encountered real live witches. I'm not talking about people that just flow in a spirit of witchcraft. I'm talking about people that everybody knows that they take sangomas, they take charms, they take action figures, voodoo. I've experienced that literally in this life against my own life. I remember there was a time I was living with some people. They was from another place like Angola or something like that. I don't know. There's some other country. But they was in America. And the guy got a hold. I was staying with them at the time. The guy got a hold of my boxers. And he placed my boxers. That's probably why I don't believe in boxers, you know. Yeah, I just thought about it. I just put two and two together. I just put two and two together. I think I, I just put two, <laughs> I just put two and two together. Realized I just put two and two together. Maybe that's why I don't believe in boxes, anointing, and all of that. You see, what I'm saying. He took my boxes. And that free day expensive. He took my boxes. <laughs> and he hid my boxes. Praise God. And he hid my boxes. <laughs> and saints. He dug it in the ground, put dirt over it, and buried it. At the time, I had chronic asthma. My asthma attack went crazy. My mother was the first person I saw flowing in the seer's anointing up close in person. My mother has a dream. And my mother locates the boxes in the ground. Locate the boxes, the asthma attack cease. But while the boxes was in the ground, it was like scheduled death. I've encountered people that were actual witches. They were actually in the satanic power. That's why I talk to you about sacrifice. See, what I'm teaching you about sowing seed, that's the spiritual sacrifice. People that are in deep witchcraft, they do sacrifice. They take animals, they take their blood. How they block off regions is they use the blood of the animal that they sacrifice unto Satan as an offering. As a result. So in the satanic world, they use the offering as well to exert the power of their kingdom. And that's what children of God, that's why children of God could lose to Satan's kingdom because they be using the law of honor, the law of sacrifice, the law of altars. And they're sowing and they're using that to tap into satanic power. And I hate to give it to that bald head nigga but Satan got power that does exist. And so if you are a person that don't sow and demons are sowing and there's somebody moving in the satanic strong, they will defeat you. Now, once you get your britches up, you put your wig on and, re and you fix your fuel pipe, you'll overcome and win. But you can't lose. 
If I wasn't as powerful as I am, I would have lost. Now, saints, I, I want some of y'all understand this. I tell you stories about my mother, but my my mother ain't relevant. <laughs> it's like how people pray to Mary. You see what I'm saying? My mother not relevant at all, 100%. You see what I'm saying? I'm just giving you my life story. She's 100% irrelevant. It's like the story of Jesus and Mary. Like Mary is 100% irrelevant to Jesus. But you just get to see my story. She's 100%. One time somebody told me, I would like to meet your mother. I said, why? <laughs> my mother is 100% irrelevant. You see what I'm saying? In that case, it's like when, when, when Philip said, let me see your mother and that'd be sufficient for me. And Jesus like, why? He that sees me sees the father. So you, I just want some of you all keep that in perspective. My mother is 100% irrelevant. Remember, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. What I'm saying is, it's not to bring attention I'm just saying, I'm just answering some of y'all minds because some of y'all in your mind, you're like, I would like to meet this mama. <laughs> what the hell you want to meet my mama for? I'm at a higher level than my mama. My mama, my mama was 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 a blessing to revealing that realm to me. But I went way farther than her. So You just got to understand those things. You got to understand it. See, sometimes we point the focus on people that's irrelevant. They're part of the story, but they're irrelevant. Same with Esther and Mordecai. Mordecai is there, but Mordecai is really irrelevant. Esther is the elephant in the room. You see what I'm saying? So if you focus too much on Mordecai, you're missing the point. Mordecai didn't really have the power to break Haman's authority, but Esther did. So if you meet Esther and say, I would love to meet Mordecai. <laughs> Mordecai was powerful, but he still didn't have the power to break things. I was watching this show the other day and the lady was saying, hell Mary, uh, mother of grace, the Lord is with thee. And she was praying to Mary. And the man that she was with was looking at her. And he was getting red. He was a white man. And he started getting red because he didn't really understand. He felt like she was acting weird. Like, why are you praying for, to Mary? But what she did was she has made somebody that was a part of the story, the story, and is not... The person irrelevant, 100% irrelevant. <laughs> so in these in these times like this, you have to see the crown in it, the reward in it, because some of you are, are in cities that God wants you to be in. You're in states that God wants you to be in. You're in situations that God wants you to be in. When a storm comes your way, you be of good cheer. Praise God in your prison if you happen to enter into a prison. Praise God in the tough time because there's always a deliverance scheduled for you in the now, not futuristically, in the now. So just hold the line. I remember many a times where I was hungry and I was like basically stuck because there wasn't like an instruction from the father. I was like, my back was against the wall. Like there was like nothing I could really do, do. That didn't sound too right. <laughs> but there was, there, that, that second part didn't make sense. There wasn't nothing I could do. Thank you. <laughs> but <laughs> so 
what? So I had to find a God solution. Like saints, I, for instance, like I remember one time I was younger. Like how I was raised, I was kind of like boxed in. Like I was spoiled in a sense, if you consider spoiled. Like we was rich at the time. When my mother started surrendering to Jesus stronger, the path was for us to leave everything. So, down the walk, I started realizing, hey, my mother doesn't know everything, which is fine, because it's time for me to come through. Are you seeing? So my mother had a certain dimension of the picture, which was fine. But then me as a man, as I, I'm 16, 17, I'm starting to realize, oh, my mother can only talk from the degree that has been revealed to her. Remember, God gives here a little, there a little. So then God started talking to me like that whole Samuel thing. You see what I'm saying? And so then I caught it. But then at first, when you learn in wisdom, like you'll share. But then I realized, uh oh, I'm actually violating protocol because God not talking to my mother about this. God talking to me. You see what I'm saying? The father not giving my mother this assignment. So therefore, it will frustrate her grace if I try to explain that to her, right? So I started realizing I was the other half of the story that was hidden. Like, here's the shocking thing. My mother would have visions, right, that she saw a man. And she would describe different things that she see on the man. But guess what? Everything that she saw over 10 years ago, I got all those stuff. So I was the man. Are you seeing? But my mother didn't understand fully, nor will anybody understand fully, because when God is showing you something futuristically in the now, you can't comprehend it. The only thing you could do is just grasp on to suspicion. And what's that other word? You can only make speculation. So I knew that after some time, like by the time of like 2000 and, uh, uh, probably like 2016, 15, 14, I started realizing I was that man. And so I took the, the fort and see, I didn't tell my mother my every move. Because it wasn't for her to know. I'm a man. I'm not a mama's boy. Because mama's boy mean that I'm going to be irresponsible. I'm not going to listen to the God functionality as a man. I have things to accomplish. So I can't sit underneath no woman. <laughs> so. And then. If you're raised up by a mama that's had you as a mama boy. It wouldn't be comprehended quickly. Because saints, let me tell you something. Our generation from all the time, which is okay. They have a mentality of wait on God, wait on God, wait on God. God going to come through for us. God going to come through for us. Nah, she, I'm God. <laughs> I'm God. I'm made in the image of God. I'm a duplicate of God. So I'm God. I'm not waiting on God. My son Joshua got the same mentality, by the way. That's why he he's he's so successful. And my sons, my sons, per se. I'm not waiting on God to come through. I'm young. I got strength. I'm going to come through. I'm going to deliver. I'm not waiting for God to provide for me. I'm going to provide. I'm a provider. I'm a God. So... What I did was I started taking care of my mother. Now, my mother didn't know all the moves I was making. Because there was times where I had some questionable moves. And I've never spoken on those moves. Well, I have spoken on those moves before. So Y'all have heard about some of them. But I had some questionable moves. i never forget... Um, 
making some moves and and I had a large bracket of money, boom, like just. So I bought food for my mother. I just fasted it out and I made sure that I was sewing on the side. So when my mother would ask me, did you eat? I'd be like, yeah, I ate. But my mother is prophetic. So my mother said, <laughs> I'm not locating no food inside of you. So I had three jokes in my mind. Okay, you're not locating food in my body. But I got another part of me, soul, spirit. Those departments got food in there. <laughs> but I didn't say nothing. Saints, you didn't grow up. You didn't become sarcastic when you became a woman or man. You've been sarcastic. Your parents just don't know the conversations that you have in your mind when they're talking to you. Pit it down. You be like, nah, nigga, nah, nigga, nah, nigga, nah, nah, nah. Nah, nigga, nah, nigga, nah, nigga. And then sometimes, if you have children in this generation, they might be cussing you out while they're inside their room. So you hear them tell me, hey, what you doing inside of there? Nothing. But you done threw you done threw your action figure doll across the room because you thought it was your dad, your mom. You threw it across. You done stumped it in the face. Your doll all broke it. Like, what, what, what you did with the doll? Nothing. It fell. So you still got a brain. You know what I'm saying? Your brain still... That's, that's why when you become submissive to God, that's why you're so powerful because now your brain is now becoming subject to what obedience is doing. Your brain is now saying yes to it. That's why you become so powerful. Because now your brain is doing exactly what the obedience is requiring of you. That's why submissive and surrender is so powerful because submission can be seen in the behavior but surrender means that this is my mind while I'm doing the behavior. So it's not just my behavior that's doing it. It's my mind. Surrender is all about the mind. Submission is all about the body. So I could see submission with the body. But I could think submission with the soul. So your body and your soul, both of them have to be brought, brought where the spirit realm is. That's why I say that he that walks in the spirit. That's the doing. The living in the spirit, that's the thinking. All of those have to be the total man. That Facebook live that I did is so powerful. I even let those broadcasts renew my soul because they're so powerful. When I was talking about not just sowing your body, but sowing your mind. I'm about to do a teaching in just a little bit, for real, for real. And you're going to be blessed by it. I'm going to do a teaching for real, for real. Not too long from now. I'm going to be teaching tonight. So we're doing Tuesday night church. I'm going to be doing a teaching that's going to be shocking. So you want to tune in and listen to everything I'm saying because it's going to feed your soul. It don't matter if you're a man or a woman or a boy or a child. What I'm going to tell you is matchless understanding, matchless intelligence. And you're going to be able to use this wherever you are. My son Joshua, he listened to what I tell him. He got favor with his boss. His boss gave him favor. But he listened to what I said. I trained him to listen to another boss. Humility is not a respect of persons, but it respects the person. <laughs> it's not a respect of persons, meaning that it's not showing partiality, but it respects the person. Humility is not a respect of persons, meaning it don't show partiality and choose and choose, but it respects the person. Wherever God has planted you, where authority is, you become respectful. 
going to be doing a deep teaching on here. And guess what? We're going to do a Bible study and I'm going to show you something in the word of God. That's amazing. If you're a virtuous woman, you won't listen to it. And if you're a kingly man, you won't listen to it because it's going to be life changing. I'm about to do it. In just a little while. So stay tuned.